Welcome to the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian indie writers on the journey to publication. I'm Jamie Hirschberger. I write short fiction under the pen name J.R. Nichols. I'm Jennifer Carl Tong, and I write historical Christian romance. I'm Christina Katane, and I write in multiple genres, including Christian dystopian fiction. I'm Rhonda Hagerman, and I write fiction and nonfiction. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and listening live. And a big thank you to all of our listeners on iTunes or any of the other platforms where we make the podcast available to you. YouTube viewers, if you like what you see, remember to hit that like and subscribe so you never miss an episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. If you are watching, why not take a moment to say hello in the chat? We've got some of our regulars there already. Um, so jump on in. So ladies, we start every episode with a segment we call what's up. This is where we go around the table, so to speak, virtually and check in to find out what is going on with one another. So, uh, Tina, what's up with you today? Well, I'm in week two of living in my camper at the campground where my daughter lives. That's a pretty fancy looking camper, Tina. <laughs> this is my daughter's office. In oh, house. okay. Um, because she has her own internet and the campground's Wi-Fi is rather spotty. So sure. I come over here to use their internet. Um, so I'm in her office instead of outside this time. So there's not so much noise interfering with things. But we are following a PCOS diet that she found because she has PCOS and it prevents her from ovulating and she wants to get pregnant. So. Um, this diet and exercise and lifestyle change regimen is supposed a, a bunch of women say they got pregnant after following it. So I'm here to support her and help her um, to be able to stick to it. And you don't have any like I'm going home sort of date in mind, do you? No, I don't. No. So that's interesting. I told so my husband I'll probably be gone a month or more. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, he was okay. visiting though, right? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> come on the weekends. He knows where I am. Like, see it's you, Bob. <laughs> and when yeah. are we coming down to visit? I don't know. Whenever he feels like it. No, when are we coming down to visit? Oh, when you, whenever you want to. I'm Ooh. here. I have no car. Because okay. my husband totaled his car and he's using mine. Oh. So he dropped me off here. Uh -huh. So I have a golf cart and I'm not going far on that. I'd rather have a golf cart. will travel. I love golf cart transportation. It's so fun. You feel yeah, like where you live, you can go all over the place. Oh right? yeah. The villages are you crazy. If you guys, <laughs> yeah. If you guys don't know about the villages here in Florida, it's a senior community where like, because you know, it's a fact of life that eventually they take your driver's license from you for reasons, whatever, but they, they let you drive a golf cart and, and in the villages, there's everything Publix, which is a grocery store, the bank, the drive through fast food place. They all accommodate golf cart traffic. It's amazing. If you've never been to the villages in Florida, it's really something to see. They have um, tunnels and bridges and you can just get around by golf cart pretty much. Well, anywhere. here we have the beach, the playground, the high ropes course, <laughs> my daughter's house. So that's where I go. And I have like a bright red lifted golf. It has a lift kit on it. So I have like, <laughs> it's like a monster golf cart. And to be clear, Jamie doesn't live in the villages. She's not that old yet. <laughs> no. She's just on the edges of it. So like, but you get to utilize all that. Yeah, right? it's fun there. Right. So um, some people are joining in the chat, Jen. Yeah. Shell says, what's up? Missed you all last week. I was on vacation, oh. but I took my notebook and worked on outlining a new, st outlining a new story. Like, Good for Way you. to be portable with the writing. We were just talking about that, about road tripping and um, doing outlining and things like that. So... Piper says in the middle of a kitchen reno, and I just found out it's going to take months longer than anticipated. Oh, dun, no. dun, dun. Plus figured out a huge plot issue with my working project. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. We love that. Is that don't, good or is that? Oh, yeah. Piper, oh, no. don't shave your hair. When I, you know what I mean? Don't do anything <laughs> drastic to your hair. It sounds like you're under a major stress. That's my unsolicited advice for you for the day. Moving on. <laughs> Robin oh says, what's up? I got book mail. 50 copies of my two <gasps> books in regular Ooh, and large print. Fun Yay. day. Book mail is a fun day. Mm -hmm. All right. So what is up with you, Rhonda? 
Um, what is up with me? Um, well, my lighting is bad today. I apologize for that. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the best place that I want to broadcast from the place in uh, this place because you know the modem and just wireless issues and that sort of thing. And the problem, this is a perfect space, except I don't have a lamp with a cord long enough to give me a full face of light right in the spot. Could, so, um, could you turn your desk so around to where the window is here for you instead of your, the, behind you? I have it turned as much as I possibly can right now. Yep. So uh, I'll just have to be sort of. Not the lamp. Very mysterious. Yeah. Like the yes, windows behind true. you, if you could sit where mm -hmm. the window was this way is what I meant, not your lamp. So Jen, what you're saying oh. is if you're trying to do lighting, because this is something maybe other people would want to know. Let's say they decide they're going to be a guest on a podcast and or they want to get their light right. Or Instagram stories. Yeah. So tell us what is you, what are you saying is the principle behind lighting? You want to put it so it's shining on your face. What's yeah. the general guideline? Natural light is best. Always. Natural I light is best. Always. So right now I'm actually using a ring light, which I can't reach it. Otherwise I would show you guys what I mean by that. I am using a ring light because in this room, there are two giant, there's a sliding glass door and a large window. And right here's a window. So there's nowhere for me to turn for like there not to be a window behind me, except for like right here with the fireplace behind me. And so I have to like offset mm -hmm. it using that. Yeah. But my new office, which is getting built right now has a little window that my desk will sit at so that it like is this way. So hopefully I'll be able to like just use natural light that way. So, mm -hmm. so is yep, that kind of your what's now. up Rhonda is just kind of still trying to get settled in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really haven't had that much of a productive week and it's not like I haven't been doing anything. It's just uh, no jobs are completely finished from this week. You know, they're all in progress. I understand because you know what? Sometimes your writing business is a lot like maintaining a home. Sometimes you have to do stuff like clean the filters or replumb a sink or work that is behind the walls that you don't get to see, but is still mm -hmm. important to having a functional house. I mean, everybody likes to, you know, get the new countertops or whatever, but you also have to do some of those maintenance things. So it's still productive and you know, you mm -hmm. were busy. But you're yeah. like, I don't have a ta-da at the end right. to show you. Yeah, I get yeah. that. If, if you Bujo people need to learn <laughs> that just because it's not done doesn't mean you didn't make progress. Well, like, that's Just true. because you didn't check it off your list. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if I break it down to enough points, then I can check lists. Ah. Or, you know, See, maybe you should do that. You'll feel more accomplished. <laughs> Inhale. <Yeah>. Check mark. <laughs> Exhale. Check mark. Sometimes, yeah. Jen, you see something in the chat? You kind of have that look on your face. <laughs> I do. Sage says that I had a difficult week. Monday was the five-year anniversary of my Aww. mom passing. And I'm so really sorry. sorry about that. I can't, I can't imagine losing my mom. I mean, mm -hmm. I've lost people that are very dear to me, and it's it's hard. So I we understand. Mm -hmm. um, Maria says her was up is done some editing on her third historical novel. Also picked up front cover for my children's fantasy novel. Yeah. yeah. Guys, well, thanks for doing that poll. I thought that was fun. Um, and it was really encouraging to see so many regular um, names kind of chiming in over there. I thought that was really fun. So I appreciate kind of being tagged in that. Um, I'll do my what's up next. So today I burned my breakfast. And what is kind of funny about that is so I was making bacon and I my my house is for me empty. Only two children are sleeping at home right now. And I'm like, oh no, I'm making bacon. The kids are gonna wake up and they're gonna get all hopeful that there's bacon. And I'm gonna say that I ate it all. But you know what's worse? is waking up and thinking, oh, there's bacon, and then hearing, but I burned it all. I don't know why <laughs> that's going to be even a worse story for my children, but that's how it feels to me, and that mm -hmm. is my what's up for like, today. Like how burnt? Like you couldn't eat like, it? Because I will eat it. I like my bacon a little bit on the wobbly side, but I'll eat it burnt, too, because it's bacon. Like If I won't eat it, it is a briquette. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Okay, that's so, how bad. Yeah, I pretty much like it's there was no into way. ash, just what you're saying. Yes, you remember it. Like, so this morning, I was like, Oh, I'm all ready to go for the podcast early. I didn't even know it was like 8 30. I was all ready to go, and then you know, drama. So I wasn't, but that's why I burned my bacon because I was actually taking care of business for the podcast instead of paying attention to cooking. Oopsie, I'm like a sim. If you don't click on me constantly, I'm gonna burn the house down, I guess. Speaking Marissa. of bacon, I left mine over there. 
Oh. <laughs> so sad. I like probably cold by now. Maria said, would have been impressive if you'd burnt cereal. <laughs> it's possible, I'm sure. I know. Give me time. Give me Cream time. of wheat I, is cereal. And yes, I have burnt it. True. Oatmeal that's is true. cereal. I don't know. Is that like worldwide? Like the oatmeal is considered cereal and, mm -hmm. and it is. It's a green. Not just yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, what's up yeah. with you? Did we already do your what's up? No, we did not. We have not. Mm -hmm. um, my what's up is I finished editing book three. You did. Wow. That's so amazing. I like obsessed over getting it done. And last night um, or yesterday on his way home from work, my husband called me and I said, listen, I have this many chapters left. It's all I want to do. And he's like, I'll cook dinner. So we had hot dogs on the grill. Nice. <laughs> but still, I didn't have to worry about it. And um, I finished it up last night, had a raging headache. My neck hurts from like, all because I've just, that's all I've been doing. And everything else is kind of falling apart because I've only obsessed over doing that. Yeah. But it's done and it's ready it's to done. go. It's done. And that's how you do hard things. You put your butt in the chair and you do the work. Good for you. And I've got to say, shout out to Randy, who is Mr. Jen, because he has been nothing but supportive about your writing career. I mean, you know, yeah, the people in our lives have to like put up with us. And it is, it is like a very strange thing to know that the person you love tucks themselves away for hours and hours. And somehow this is a better idea than being with me. What? But we have supportive family and we so appreciate them. Shout out to Randy and good for you, Jen, for doing hard things. Yay. So off to the editor next week. Ooh, <laughs> yay. Are you ready for that editor? Yes, that's why my smile is so big. I can't wait. All of these juicy things you added since the, because when, when we stopped doing our meetings, when we started doing the podcast, we really lost the element of being super in touch the with what each other is writing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's kind of a bummer. Mm -hmm. So anyway, okay. Now, uh, we've done all of the what's up. So we need to move on to the topic du jour, which is um, indescribable, which of course that worship, praise and worship song, indescribable. Da, da. Anyway, but this is not about God. This is about your characters. Okay. So how do we handle character description in our novels? So can someone who has the outline tab open already take over speaking right now? Well, first of all, we want to talk about why physical description was important or if it even is important. And I right. would argue that it is it is important, though it may be, depend on your genre. So as always, I'm going to talk about romance. And it is very important in romance because that tends to be when if people you can say what you want. But when you first saw your significant other or at some point, because it re really wasn't a love at first sight thing for me and my husband. Well, for, for me, <laughs> it's another story. Um, like there is something like it's the, you are, you notice the physical first. And so with romance, it's a very important to uh, incorporate the physical aspect of a person's description and not just skim over that. Well, and to support what you're saying, Jennifer, I would imagine it's important in romance to paint the picture for your reader because the experience you're selling to the reader is a, is that love story. I mean, it's it's a key component. And if you want your reader to believe the woman has fallen in love, they need to believe that the person is attractive, right? So attractive right. at least to the person. So even if they're not attractive in like a traditional way, it has to be something yes. that your female or your opposite to your partner for that person would find attractive, right? Right. Right. Which I'm, I'm kind of excited to share my sprint today, except that I didn't get to finish it. So I don't know, but, but it's already starting something in my mind, but yeah. Is it a romance? It. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Ooh, oh, yeah. Cause it was all our sprint today. We'll just go ahead and spoil that is to describe some, some person for the whole sprint because we really wanted to, um, explore this idea of what it is like to take some time to describe a person. So Jennifer, you're saying it's genre dependent and romance. Absolutely. It's super important. Tina, right. what do you think about it as far as the genres that you write in? Um, well, like action adventure, um, I don't really write in sci-fi, but I think um, that might not be the same. I think like if you have a creature from space, obviously you need to describe it. Mm -hmm. um, but action, adventure, fantasy that I write in, I generally don't 
um, describe the physical features of my character as much as maybe what they're wearing. So if like they, they were um, going into a battle, I might describe their armor and their sword mm -hmm. um, and just touch on little bits and leave most of it, most of the like eye color and all that kind of stuff to the reader's imagination. Mm -hmm. You know, you just right. said something that sparked something in my, in my mind too, um, being genre specific. Like, I think that it's important that you would um, decide what you're going to describe, right? Um, I never read the books. Um, oh, are you trying to think of the name of a yes. series? It, okay, movies and the Hunter, Hunger Games. Hunger mm -hmm. Games. Okay. And my stepdaughter saw them. She was so angry because she goes, "That's not what Katniss looks like." And then her friends like, "That's exactly what Katniss looks like." And they had an argument about it. And I wonder if it's because the author chose to describe only like the, they were arguing about the braid. The hair. Mm -hmm. That's what they were arguing about. And I think that that was very specific in the story and it had something to do with the story. And mm -hmm. so that's what they focused on. Where romance, I have to think, you know, I focus on all kinds of, you know, throughout the story, the different physical aspects, but maybe other genres only focus on like one thing, like, and or something that they get really specific so that they make you under, like, make you in your mind at least see the character, but it might be different than other mm -hmm. people. But like with um, mystery, Rhonda, you it's it's important for you but for a different reason than it is for me right yes because you want people to fall in love with your two main characters with their physical description and um i want people to be a suspect you know i want them mm -hmm. to look a different way than you want your characters to look right. and not only the people it's just as important to describe the people but you also need to describe surroundings and items. And you need to point out details that um, maybe are completely benign, but they look like they're suspicious or make something that should be suspicious look completely benign. So maybe uh, when we talk about like, like description, like settings and stuff, that would be more like what you are concerned with when you write than you are. Yes. About and yes. And because sometimes you could even consider the, um, you know, the weapons or the clues as sort of mm. a character. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Right. Like, like, uh, maybe there's a, a statue that has pearls in it or something. Now this becomes a character in the book right. and you have to treat it as such. It has to be described just kind of the same way because the mm -hmm. details are important in general in mystery. All details are important. I would think as a mystery mm -hmm. writer, would you agree? Yep. I've never written one, but I would think. So Tina, you were saying about science fiction and you were saying, of course, description would be important there, the physicalities. But um, were there other things that you wanted to share about physical description as far as like, say you were doing a crime drama um, description of the victim or do you limit it only to what's necessary to solve the case? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I would decide what the reader needs to know in order to feel like they can solve it mm, or that okay. they have an idea of what of who done it so it's important um, to be particular where you spend your attention right that's ah. my opinion yeah yeah awesome robin says see i've heard the opposite i've heard it's best not to give super detailed descriptions mm -hmm. so that the reader can fit their imagination to the story yep. this is why i think it's genre specific because I've also heard of uh, writers getting slammed in reviews because they wait till halfway through their book and they mention something about the physical appearance of one of the characters and people get mad because they're like the whole book I thought they were blonde and now you're telling me they're a redhead because they weren't they weren't specific enough they they were letting their um their readers come up with their own physicality but then they decided to throw something in there so I think it can be a choice I think it depends on your genre. But if you make the choice, you got to stick with it so that you don't anger those people that are reading it and have already decided what the characters look like. I so, think it also it also is dependent upon the story. For example, mm -hmm. I'm reading a book right now where the main character is an albino. Um, and she's discriminated against me. It's a fantasy thing. So um, she wakes up this dragon through this magic uh, ability that she has. And when she does, her hair turns copper. So that's part of the story. And it, so it would be important to know right from the start um, that this girl is an albino and she has white hair and then it's different than everybody else who's kind of oriental looking. 
All right. Well, I have go ahead with uh, the chat, Jen. What's Piper got to say? She said, also, I've been told not to include something that isn't going to actually be important later in the story. Maybe not so particular for looks, though. Um, I agree. Like for setting and things like that, like don't over describe what's going on if it's not important. But I, again, I think it's genre specific. And sometimes things that I write, you might think, well, like, why is that important? Like Esther, physical, like the physical appearance was very, very important because I had to keep you believing that he thought she was someone else through almost the whole book. So yeah, that's yeah, Jen, you really had a trick to pull off there. And you did a very good job, by the way, oh, if you guys like you. mistaken identity and clean Christian romance, Jennifer, they should pick up a copy of avoiding Esther available, available everywhere. Now. Yes. Yeah. Woo, do it again. Sorry. <laughs> avoiding no, Esther, okay. no. You got to okay. practice. Do it. Avoiding Esther available everywhere books are sold. <laughs> yes. When I meet you guys in real life in the chat, I want you to sell me your book. Okay. I'm Sage, author of, and tell me where it's available because you guys have to practice talking about yourselves like your author. So knock it off because you are. So anyway, I just wanted to say I was thinking about this topic and I've kind of come down to because I just did not know what to say because I write in multiple genres and I'm like, so I can't talk to a specific genre. So how do I handle description? And I guess my philosophy, like it or not, this is just what I like to read. And so it's what I like to write. I am writing from a voice and the voice that I'm writing from, I feel like has eyes and is in the room, whether I'm inside my character's head or I'm an omniscient narrator, so I describe what I see because that's what's going to be important to the story because I'm telling the story. So I don't worry about how much description or what to describe because it always changes based on what is happening in the story and what your eyes land on. You don't always notice that someone has blue eyes, but sometimes you do. And if you wouldn't organically notice their blue eyes, I wouldn't mention it. Like I don't shove description into my book. So people know what my character looks like. I rely on them to just get what organically comes out. And I think sometimes my readers have no clue what my people look like. And then I would just have to take that criticism and try to fix it in the future. Yeah, that's funny that you say that because up in the chat a little bit earlier, I'm trying to see who it was. I think it was Shell said that um she got slammed in a review because <gasps> oh right here it was piper sorry i got a review that told me i had not described my character i think she was so clear to me i thought i had yeah. which i think a lot of us do and i think that even some of us around this circle here have had that because we're like no we because we fall in love with our characters but we have to make sure that we are do we are writing in a way that everyone else sees what we see right and mm -hmm. i agree with what jamie said that you I don't do descriptions just to throw descriptions out there just so you know what I think they look right, like. It right. has to have a purpose for it. And even if you're writing first person, like you were talking about, Jamie, sometimes you can describe what the person is seeing in a someone else and it gives you more insight into the, the person to, like that's narrating. Like yes. the way they judge that person because of the mm -hmm. way they look or the fact that what they notice about that person. I read a, I think it was, it was a James Scott Bell book that he he put a little like a short story in there and the guy was talking about looking at a woman and he was noticing the necklace and, her, and he started talking about her neck and it became very um kind of borderline sensual uh, it yeah. became very sensual and all he was talking about was the necklace and her neck mm -hmm. that was it and i was like whoa that was really well done that didn't tell me anything about the woman it told right. me everything about the person that was describing very interesting. the woman. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And I, so yeah, you like, I love that Jennifer, because most people would use that opportunity to say her green eyes flashed. Ha ha. Now, you know, my character has green eyes. Well, nobody's falling for that. But like you said, if you can disclose something about the teller, then you are doing like a really cool artsy thing. And I think that elevates your writing. So I think we should strive to have more moments like that when we can. Would you agree? Yes, I do. Yeah. What about you other two ladies? Would you agree? Yes, definitely. I agree. Mm -hmm. yep. Awesome. Okay. So I think we need to move on in the outline. I still do not have my tab clicked. What is wrong with me? What is next? <laughs> so we have to talk about actionable. That's what it was. We want you guys to be able to up your description game and we want to up our description game. And so we're trying to think, what can we tell you to go away from today's episode that you could actually do the next time you sit down to write 
to make sure your descriptions are better. Who wants to call out the first one? What about you, Tina? What's one actionable tip for our uh, podcast viewers and listeners? Um, I would narrow the focus. Okay. So if you're doing physical description, um, narrow it down to one or two things for each scene. Um, are you going to talk about her hair? Are you going to talk about like in um, historical fiction, like Jen does, it's very important to describe the clothing. Yes. That the character is reading. So maybe in the beginning you want to focus on that. So pick one or two things and focus on that for each scene. That's Very a really good, good point. I was just thinking mm -hmm. about a particular scene. Speaking of avoiding Esther, when John sees Esther for the first time, I did start with the hat. Like her face is hidden with a hat because I, <laughs> I was setting it up for like, so you feel like you're there in that time period. I yeah. But then as her head lifted, like I'm thinking like, man, no, I slammed a whole bunch of description in there, but I really didn't. She lifted her head and he, it started with the eyes. Right. And then it slipped down the nose. He talked about her nose and then said on the lips, because wouldn't that what I'm, be a man? That's be, what he's seeing. Right. I don't talk about how tall she is. I don't mm -hmm. talk about in that scene. I don't talk about right. any of that stuff, but um, I, I just focus on that. And it like, is it, it gives you, it does describe her, but it really gives you insight into John in that moment and right. the kind of person he is and where he mm -hmm. and like what's happening to him right then. So um. So yeah, I totally agree with that about narrowing it down to just focusing on one or two things. Rhonda, do you have a tip to uh, toss out there so that today when our listeners jump out there to write something, they can make their descriptions better? What do you got for them? Well, <clears throat> I don't know if you want to call this a tip, but this is something that I do and maybe they can do it too. When I'm deciding what characters are going to be in my book, I have to really flesh them out pretty well. I don't do one of those like 500 question questionnaires about oh, like what they did was asking grade. about a character bio you're kind of talking like that like a sketch or something yes, yes. yeah okay. but before i have like a movie playing in my head when mm -hmm. i'm writing and okay. so i need to be able to see who the characters are so mm -hmm. i need to get that all determined before i start writing <clears throat> because that um helps with their reactions uh to the other characters too when i'm writing that's so. really fascinating because um, I would have said until speaking with you in this moment that I also am watching a movie. I realized I am not. For me, I am hearing a story. Isn't that weird? In my head, I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. I hear really? words. Yeah. yeah. What do you girls do? You girls see your story, or do you hear yeah. it? I see a page with with it written on a page. So really, I wow. movie all the way. Movie, movie all, the, all way. the way. Cool. Yeah. I think that's going to flavor the way you handle descriptions. Where do you guys see mine? It's not. It's not. I I think it's totally off the reservation. But <laughs> I think <it laughs> we'll probably, get to that. I think it probably flavors the choice that you choose to the genre you choose to write in too. I mean probably, when you guys are yeah. seeing this about what you actually see like I think that tells us a lot about what genres you've chosen too. Well Very yes cool. because that's why genre isn't important to me, right? Because for mm -hmm. me it's the music of the words and how they flow together. And so in my head I need to like if the writer starts me off with da 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 then I'm like whoa so see do you understand? So it's like for me genre that's why genre that's so Wow. That's funny because wow. I would say Crazy. it's the poetry of the words. <sighs> and you yeah. say it's the music. It's like, it's similar, but a little bit See different. Why, this is why it's important to listen to everybody in your, in your community, because you're going to have different giftings and you're going to have different perspectives. And someone might not see it the way you do. That does not make them your enemy. It just makes them maybe not your audience. So move True. on and find a person who appreciates the writing the way that you do it. I mean, we've all talked about none of us would read romance, but we love Jennifer and she's a good writer. So we read, you know what I'm saying? We don't like say, well, you have nothing to teach me romance writer. What would we do if we did that? We would be fumbling around with no podcast and no slick marketing and everything that Jennifer does. So whatever about all that. Who, what are we doing next? We have more uh, to talk about. Piper, anything? Robin, and Maria are all team movie. I'm curious to know, like, if other of our um, chatters are are like the, the other two. Like, if any of you see just the words on the paper, or if any of you just hear it. I'm just curious. So I'm just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so I, go ahead, Jen. I would say I think I already said this earlier. Is I would describe early. Don't 
don't wait until the middle of the book mm -hmm. to start describing your characters because at that point your readers have already imagined them. So try to describe as early as possible and in creative ways. Like don't just say the blonde long legged woman, like, no, just do mm -hmm. it very more creatively. Um, and then vary it. Don't describe it always in the same way. This is something I struggle with because I do focus on all of the physical attributes, especially um, facial features that it's easy for me to say, you know, the round eyes. <laughs> There's lots of different shades of eyes. <laughs> Not everybody has like. And they're, well, they're always like, twinkling and. And so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It is difficult though because I find gestures diff more difficult than a physical description. It's very easy to say someone has brown hair, but to try to think of different ways that people can shrug or lift an elbow or raise an eyebrow or curl the corner of their mouth. Like if you're trying to say he smiled, if you have a smiley person, you have to think of different ways to describe their smile or do you know what I mean? So for me, it's less about like what color is their hair and definitively how tall are they? Those things are facts written in stone. But when you, you know what I mean? So the physicality describing those things are difficult for me. So I, my challenge, my actionable tip would be to go and find your particular stumbling block. In my newsletter, I put pools. Um, all of my people stare into pools. I'm like, whoever stares into a pool of anything. And so I was kind of having fun with that in the newsletter, but I'm like, I've got to figure out a different way to talk about looking at someone else in the eyes, you know? And um, so challenge yourself to find your little crutches or whatever and fix just one, just fix one. That's a great right? advice. That's really good advice. Okay, do we, uh, are all hearts cleared on the topic? If so, we can move along. What do you got in the chat, Jen? Um, uh, I don't know. All right. Uh, what, <laughs> Shell, whoops, sorry. <laughs> Shell said, I think I hear first, then see like a movie. Uh, I have very loud inner monologue, but also see yes. in pictures. Mm -hmm. And Maria says, depends on what kind of process you're at as well for drafting. And when I'm reading sections, it's like a movie. But when I'm deep into the edits, like I am right now, it's more like seeing the words. I'm yeah. just the opposite. I think, I, mm -hmm. I think it's more of a movie for me when I'm editing, but go ahead. Jen, what was that word we were trying to say? Lept. L-E-A-P-T. I was like, how do you spell lept? Because I couldn't remember would there be an A in it or not. And I wrote it and it looked weird. That must be what Shell's talking about. Like she sees the words and they have to look right. Do you know what I mean? Because when yeah. you write down a word and you're like, that can't be how it's spelled, but it really is. Mm -hmm. I get that. UG says, I listen to my words. I had not really thought about that before. I read my words out loud and tweet constantly a tweet oh. until I hear the flow. She that's my tweets. Good. Yeah. 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 Um, that's what I've been doing. That's what this last stage of editing is listening to the computer, read it to me. And there's nothing like the monotonous sound of the computer voice reading your words <laughs> because you hear the mistakes. Yeah. You like you get past the, like when you're reading it out loud or when you're even reading it in your head, you think there's words there. You think that they're spelled correctly, but like when they see, say to you, she asked the stare, Oh, wait, <laughs> that's not a sense. Yeah. Do you want to know like the biggest proof of this is when we read our sprints on the air because we correct them. Do you know what I mean? As we're yes. going along. But then we've noticed because for reasons which will be revealed sometime soon, we have noticed that we are self-correcting the sprints when we read them out loud to you guys, but that they're really much worse. <laughs> so someday you'll probably get a, a picture of a few, hint, hint, that have been uncorrected so you can see um, how much we really kind of fudge just because it's natural to fix it, right? When your brain just fixes the error. So Jen is wise to have a different person or artificial person read her, her manuscript. Yep. All right. Should we move on now to the super fun feeding of the backs? Yay. Yes. Yay. This we is actually had somebody in chat today say that they liked the, the sprint today. We've never had that. Can I just tell wow. you? Never, has anyone said we like the sprint. You think we're like, Ugh. am I wrong? Or did Jason March like post his sprint right into the chat? Um, In we Facebook, I saw yeah, that. We, um, we encourage you to share your sprints with us. Now, Jennifer, tell us how they get the most bang for their buck. Is it smarter for them to like have a blog and then retweet to us so we can comment back? Do you know what I mean? Because if we promote them, like what would help them get the most out of it? If they put it on what? And then what? Well, I mean, I guess it depends on what they want. If they want traffic to their blog, I would say put it on your blog and then tweet us with the link and make sure you tag, you know, at Christian, Chris in Indy Rit. I think okay. that's what they are. Um, but we just, even if you just want to do a screenshot and um, send it as a, an image, put it as an image on Twitter and send, we'd love to share your guys' tweets. Or we would me, love that too. 
Mm-hmm. But we share your your writing because yes. that's what we're here for. You, and I you, yes, my my thought process is if it's a social media thing that I'm doing, I'm trying to milk it. Like I don't want to maybe get it be lost in the comments of the podcast where it's just going to be the feed is just going to keep going and my sprint is goodbye forever. I'd rather maybe have it on my blog page and then link to it, right? So it can be viewed maybe by more people is kind of what I'm saying. So you guys and should always be, a, it's like a, a material now that you have. What, Jen, what, Tina? If you want to drive traffic to your Facebook, like let's say you have a Facebook author page and you want to drive the traffic there, post it on your author page and tag Christian indie writers in it. Mm-hmm. Great idea too. Yep. All right. Yes. Because, um, like it's hard to come up with content for your social media and for your newsletter. So always consider all your writing um, help. It's an aid to you to advance your career. With that said, They've, oh, same thing for Instagram too. They could do um, oh. an image chat, make it a, in post, and we will share that around too. So all of them. Yes. Tag us in them and we'll help. Let me tell you guys, you think that the social media component is hard, but just take the work you're already doing and use that to puff up your social media platform. And you'll be one of a few people who aren't on there saying, buy my book. Okay. So, um, Jen, uh, why don't you tell us what the sprint prompt was? We set a timer for 15 minutes every week and we write, write, write without correcting. And then we share with each other. And because these are raw and unedited pieces, we give only positive, encouraging feedback. Our prompt this week was And the entire sprint describing the physical attributes of a single character. Ooh. All right, Jen, take it away. Let's see what you can do. (laughs) Danny spotted her from across the room. She stood with a group of other women, deep in conversation, as if she had been there a while. Why was he only noticing her now? Women like that tend to make an entrance, garnering his attention immediately. She was taller than the others. He judged her to be about 5'8", maybe 5'9", just like he liked them. And her hair was dark, all dark. No artificial highlights like the, uh, like the others around her. Maybe her hair wasn't all that dark, he mused, since the sea of bottled blondes that surrounded her might just be causing it to appear darker than it really was. Regardless, it made her stand out, causing Danny to once again wonder at how he had missed her. She laughed at something, and Danny noticed her smile. It wasn't as white as the others. The lighting of the room caused many of the women here to appear to have blue teeth. He was too far away to know for certain, but he thought they might be a little crooked. He hoped so. He wondered what color her eyes were. They were dark. They looked dark, maybe chocolate brown, but they could have been a dark hazel as well. He made a mental note to check when he got close enough. She turned and he noticed how long her hair actually was. Long wavy curls cascaded down her back, settling somewhere between her shoulders. Probably extensions. He didn't know any woman with the patience to actually grow hair that long. He didn't like extensions. He liked playing with the hair of the women he was with and extensions felt creepy. The crowd thinned around her and Danny got his first glimpse of her body and his heart dropped. No wonder he hadn't noticed her. Unlike the women in her company, she did not have an Instagram-worthy figure. She was chunky. Not fat, but plumper than Danny preferred. But honestly, it was hard to tell how plump she, since she was dressed like, since she wasn't dressed like the other women here. The others, including those already married to players, wore tight-fitting, figure-revealing dresses. This woman wore a sheath dress. It fell just above the knee, revealing her lower leg, and Danny had no complaints there. But the boxiness of the dress hid most of the rest of her curves, and Danny liked curves, but only in certain spots. This woman woman seemed three, two, one. Mm. I feel like I know her. I feel like I know him. (laughs) She's not supposed to be me. Is that what you thought? Because, like, gosh, I hope that didn't seem out that I was trying to write about me. But anyway, how do you, like... Do you like him? Jamie, you said you think you know him. No. Good. You're not supposed to like him. At least not yet. (laughs) So, yeah, as I'm writing this, I'm thinking, okay, so what if just a normal woman Mm -hmm. were with a bunch of, like, bottle blondes, right? She would stand out, right? And like you said earlier, but we didn't talk about this before we sprinted, like, the um, a normal woman, if a, a man could fall in love with a normal woman because you don't know what you're attracted to, right? Like you just, the different things that's, you know, I don't know they how to explain the it. catch the eye, sort they of. catch like, the mm-hmm. eye. Yeah. And yeah. so he's and been it's... surrounded by all these fakes and all of a sudden there's a real woman there and he notices her. So I, I love the idea of playing with that idea that like 
he has to like come to realize that like there's more than just skinny bodies out there, you know? Well, and if you can understand Jennifer, kind of what you're saying, you can see how an idea can become fresh, even though it seems like it, it might've been written before and mm -hmm. hear me out because each character is going to be just like an individual person in real life. And when you're dealing with an individual person in real life, they did not grow up in a vacuum and right. their reactions and responses. So your fella had that reaction to chunky, awesome girl getting her groove on on the dance floor. But what would like another chunky girl who isn't so bold to dance or something, you know what I mean? There would be a yeah. whole different kind of description going on there. So I think that was a very excellent sort of um, first one. Way to go, Jen. Way to handle oh, the challenge. It just made yeah. a question pop into my mind. I wonder what a blind man Ooh. would see wow. in a girl that would attract him. I've read a hmm. romance. It's not Christian, but it's clean. I think she is a Christian, but it's a clean romance. And um, I, if you go to my Instagram and go to books I've read or something like that on my highlights, I highlighted the series because I'm just so impressed with the series that this woman did. But one of the characters, he was blind. So well done. Um, you don't end up really knowing what she, even though you're on both, you get both perspectives, his and hers. You don't really end up knowing really what she looks like, but it's such a great romance. I do love it. Do you want to know what that reminds me of? Yes, I do want to know what that reminds me Hello. of. Hello. <laughs> you're looking for. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and if you are anywhere around my age, you are old and also know this song. So don't even pretend. Okay. So thank you, Jen, for that wonderful little squirrel segue. Um, how about you read us yours next, Rhonda? Oh, okay. I will. Um, all right. And also I want to say, now that I know that C Tina sees the words hovering in front of her when she writes, I'm not as jealous of her 905,000 words. That she's <laughs> I know they're like given to her ahead of time. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> right. I don't get mine in a platter like some people. Okay. All right. All right. How was the beauty parlor? I asked as she jumped into the front seat and made herself comfortable. She looked great. My results were never this good. Maybe I need to start seeing it. a new girl. Oh, what happened there? Her blonde hair had natural highlights and lowlights, and somehow this new hairstyle showed them off beautifully. Did you like your new stylist? She replied with a small noise, which sounded affirmative to me, but did not turn away from the window she was staring out of. Not in the mood to talk, I guess. Stopped at the light. Oh, stopped at the light. I watched her look up the car window. I noticed her ear twitch. I've always been jealous of her ability to somehow show emotion with her ears. Mine are completely stationary. I cringed at the memory of seven-year-old me wasting a whole summer trying to teach my ears to move. I still don't know how some people do it. The light, green, the light turned green and we were on our way again. Do you want to go to the toy store? That got her attention. She flashed me her toothy smile but still said nothing. Ear twitch. This is what we're talking about. Find something, right, to describe. Yeah. And describe that instead of like, like so good. Like I never, ever have ever written about an ear twitch. But like, as soon as you said that, I was like, I was there. I saw it. I could see this person. So good. Oh, so this is about your daughter or about a Vulcan or about a half bunny, half person. No, just kidding. But like, is it about your daughter? Hey, well, it's about my Pomeranian daughter. Oh, <laughs> then I was right. Because I was like. I thought a bunny. Do you know what um, I mean? Yeah. So yay that it's Teddy, right? Teddy needs um, to make way more appearances on our Instagram account. I think with our books and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. Teddy mm -hmm. needs, because Teddy is very cute and that kind of thing gets likes and follows, right? So I think, Rhonda, I think Teddy needs to make appearances on here. With her oh my goodness. Well, I said that before that oh, she did. needs to have the dog in her lap because We've seen her with the dog in her lap, and it's just so cute. It's so cute. Teddy is adorable. He needs to be on the podcast. Anyway, but yes, but your sprint was very good, Ren. <laughs> well, Let's turn you. this into yeah. talking about Teddy. <laughs> it was, and I, I, I specifically chose her because I was I wanted to describe her like a human because she is, she actually is a human. Aww. I know people say that, but she really is. And um, <laughs> but you know she's still a dog too. So I it wanted totally work because to, I thought it was a human. I was too. until you said Teddy. I was like, now I now, and I was remembering what you said. I'm like, yep. Good. I okay, was good. morphing between like an older woman mm -hmm. coming out of the hairdresser oh. and then a younger woman with blonde hair. Mm -hmm. And then it, when you said toy store, I'm like, oh, it's a child. So mm -hmm. like 
I never got to the dog part. <laughs> See, I thought you'd get it first because of uh, Charlie. The toy. Want to go to the toy store that got her attention? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a head tilt. Like, see, little dogs are like my thing. So whatever. Okay. Um. So I will read my next. Sorry that makes you last, Miss Katane. But I totally failed at this assignment. So I would like to get it out. Get my misery over with. So here what we do you go. Mean you failed at it. Well, okay. I was like just not obedient. I just wrote whatever. But in my defense, I live. I went live on my Jamie. J.R. Nichols eh, Facebook profile because I am an author now and I have to do lives and stuff like that. So I was like, what I can do is I will live stream when I'm actually doing the sprint for this podcast. Since I'm already doing a sprint for the podcast and I need to have lives on my Facebook, I decided that's how I would do it. I don't know if that's going to help me or not, but I thought I would give it a whirl. So if you guys want to see how the sausage is made, I don't know why you would. You can look around like my page. So like you'll get a notification because it's random what time we do it. I'm making you no promises. Okay. Cause we sit down here at like nine o'clock. Some of us don't even have like, you know, pants on or racing around. And <laughs> I'll give her so, secrets away. <laughs> right. So like, I don't know what time it will be every Friday, but I'm going to live me creating my sprint. So this time, not only was I like stressed because I don't do super well with physical description, but I was also live for the first time. So I was just weird. So they can I go back to your page right now and see it. Right now. What did you say, Jen? So they can go back to your lot, your page right now and they could see your actual writing as you're wow. doing it. You did screen chain, right? Share, right? Yeah, I screen shared. After I the didn't podcast know. is over. Yeah, yeah. unless you want to watch me create it while I read it, but that might really freak you out. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to read it to you. <clears throat> Paul stood about six foot one, but he claimed an extra half inch to anyone who stopped long enough to listen. He took his coffee, one cream, one sugar, though the list of people who knew this fact was dwindling, and he didn't see opportunities to train a new gopher anywhere on his admittedly very short now horizon. He had a hooked nose, which he wiped with a hanky when he fell to drip, or when he felt nervous, which was mostly any time he was talking to a lady, the unfortunate result of which being the misunderstanding between he and Mrs. Lafferty about an allergy to her gooseberry pie. Of course, once that matter was settled, the married woman, women in town sent their pies via husband delivery service, and the single ladies and widows remembered to mention how high the pollen count was the last time they checked it when they stopped by to sit on the porch a spell and drop off a basket of fried chicken or a bowl of ribbon, layered ribbon jello. He had an old dog who spent most of his days sleeping near the toe of his worn work boots. He always wished he was fancy enough man for cowboy boots, but something about a pointed toe didn't go right with his stocky physique. Trying on cowboy boots was the only time he complained much about his build, though. He appreciated being strong, able to take on most chores that needed doing in spite of the fact that the face he took his blade to each morning seemed to have more creases to navigate lately, and the whiskers that tickled the back of his neck from the place where they'd fallen onto his shirt collar were salt and pepper now. The coon dog didn't seem to care how old he got, and the feeling was mutual. He'd seen the dog's own de decrepitude as a sort of mirror of his own, mostly believed watching the aging mutt was the one thing that kept him in check and aware that his life was slipping away. It's okay, he thought. It can keep on slipping. He'd had enough of the struggle to stay in one place. The farm going back to the bank was just the first step of the long slide back, back to where he'd come from, back to the time before Lorraine and the kids and the drought and the terrible fights that sent her back to Chicago and the kids away to art school in San Francisco. He reached for his flask and braced himself for the punch of shine on his lips, the way he had since he first tried the stuff as a boy of nine. He wondered if anyone his pawn knew saw him today, would they think him a specter, some sort of remnant cut away from the fabric of a man who'd managed to accomplish something with his meager 45 years? Paul had six on him and he was fixing to start from scratch. He bent down to pat the coon dog and muttered, good boy. Then he put his flask to his lips again. Wow. I don't know. I don't understand how you say that you failed. Yeah, really? I didn't focus on one character. I went into the dog. I didn't talk about like what he really, like I didn't stay on him. Do you know what I mean? But you use the dog as a reflection of describing your character. Right. We know your character. So you were trying to strive the dog, but I know exactly what your character looks like. No, 
I was trying to describe the man. Oh, you mean when I was describing the dog? You mean? Oh, I thought you were saying that you went to the dog. I thought you were talking. Okay, okay. okay. I was supposed to be describing this man, and the next thing you know, I'm going on about this dog, but I'm like, well, Mm -hmm. it's it's a sprint, so I just went with it. Was it enough about the man, though? Like it wasn't. Yes, it was. The creases on his face. I there was just enough for me to get a picture of him that I am very happy with, without you telling me exactly like every detail of his face, but also the setting was so good. I know exactly where this guy is from, practically the time frame. Uh, you know, him drinking his shine and um, the specters and it just, oh, the whole thing was great. Plus the he thing was about the this- boots um, being pointy, he can wear pointy toed boots because of his stocky frame like that, like filled in the picture for me. Awesome. Just that line right there. Oh, good. Yay. Sorry, Jen. No, that's okay. No, just loved it. I don't even remember what I was going to say. It was good. So good. Um, Piper's Yay. asking, did you say he was 45? I don't remember that. I'm no, gonna he's say. 51 uh, because okay. his dad died at 45 and he had six years uh, on him. Uh, like yeah. that, wow. that was what I was going to say. Like you said, that stuck with me because that you gave us so much information in that one sentence. I know his age. Mm-hmm. I know he's had a hard life. And I know mm-hmm. that like his dad died young and he probably didn't have a good relationship with him the way that he talked about him. Well, so, and he never measured up. Yeah. Love it. All right. So, I, appreciate I, think it. That, I think that uh, the reason that this description means so much to me is because you didn't just describe him physically. You described everything that made the guy what he was practically. Why he's tired and sort of all that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. I appreciate that uh, you guys can see what I what I'm trying to do because you wonder does it work when you do it. So thank you. I appreciate all the good feedback. Um, I really and appreciate I, it. Go ahead. And I skipped over to your page, and it's so cool to see. Like you can't see you. I thought you were going to be there and the screen. It's just the screen, but it's cool to see like your writing, and then you back up, and like it just. If, in case you guys want to see oh. it, it's just kind of neat to see. All right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and then you can see. Um, you know, it happening in real time. Awesome. Okay. Well, we've got one more to hear. Bambina, we love your stories. Take it away. Okay. Um, I just want to start by saying that this is a lot more description than I would ever put in one scene because that was the assignment. So, And I don't know what I was thinking when I named my character because it actually comes out being spelled asinine. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to spell assassin? No, asinine. Oh. Oh. Uh, Azanine is like I was trying to think of a fantasy character name. So oh, anyway, that's great. Were... <laughs> a fantasy character named Asanine. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh my gosh. I Someone just needs noticed to like draw that one for us. Maybe Jason. Jason, are you an artist? Can you draw us a fantasy character? Although possibly maybe someone in his life would not approve. So we should not encourage delinquency. I take it back. No shenanigans this is for you. One of those things you would change in editing. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Azanine's cloak billowed behind her in the breeze. She stood on the hilltop, turning in circles as she stared at the landscape all around her. Dead bodies covered the ground like a carpet. A drop of blood fell from the tip of her sword, making an almost musical sound as it plopped into the puddle below. The sound startled her from her stupor, and she wiped the blood off her sword on her pants before replacing it in its scabbard. She wore the armor from the kingdom of the Black Dragon, all black except for the red flames etched into her helmet, which lay on the ground beside her where she dropped it. She picked it up and held it to her side with an elbow. She pulled the comb from her dark hair and let it fall down her back. The wind picked it up and it billowed with her cape, several strands blowing across her face. She put two fingers to her lips and whistled. The sound echoed back to her from the surrounding hillsides. Any who'd faced her on the battlefield that day were startled by her eyes glowing orange and flickering with fire, but now they'd cool to their usual jade green. Her lips were full and red, even without stain, and her high cheekbones testified to her pure blood. On the horizon, Boltar appeared, neighing and rearing up in greeting. Azanine started at, in his direction, making her way through the bodies, her boots squelching in the mud. That's it. Hmm. Wow, I love the billowing cape and hair. Mm-hmm. I love that. Right. And that sounds like a great description for, a, you know, a fantasy novel that just goes into all that kind of detail. 
I like it because it's so different from what I do. Like you are like a, a omniscient person mm -hmm. on the outside. Like when I, most of my description comes from the inside of the head of one of the characters looking at someone else and you're able to like, draw, like have like an omniscient kind of like a place mm -hmm. flo floating out here describing things. And it's a, it's a totally different world. That's really cool. Yes. I'm so glad mm -hmm. we did this episode because things are coming to my attention, such as like. Jennifer's point about when you are describing through the voice of a character, you're revealing that character. That seems to be a big takeaway, something that I learned today that I really didn't know before we came here. And then hearing Tina's just now is description is more about how you look and is about those choices you make, like wiping the blood off on your clothes as opposed to on the cloak of your enemy, for example, or like there are choices that you deliver, you make them as an author and sometimes you feel like your character just did it because it's what mm -hmm. happened. Do you know what I mean? And those are yeah. the kinds of things where you're like, I had no idea my character would choose to wipe the sword off that way. And then that gives you like a clue and you're like, hooray, I know my character even more. So I just really feel like this episode has taught me a lot. Same here. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go, Bambi. That was an yeah. excellent description. I know you said it was yeah. more than you ever would do, but it did not feel like mm -hmm. too much. Did you girls feel like it no. felt like too much? I agree completely. Yeah, Shell liked the details of the fire on the helmet and the fire in the eyes. That's tricky. Yeah, that's one of the things I probably wouldn't have thought to describe was mm -hmm. her eyes. And so then I ended up trying to tie it into the story instead of just like, Oh, her eyes were green, mm, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, why would somebody have noticed her eyes? And, and in my mind, she had killed all these people with, by herself. Mm. Like, so. Yeah. Well, um, and I would. Magical yeah. power kind of whatever. Love it. Love it. And I love that too, Tina, because then future, future chapters of this particular work, let's say you expanded it. If you ever came to a place where you had described something, you could fall back to like a fire sort of theme and you could, you could describe it in terms that would remind of fire, right? So it can become like a theme in your work, like if you're careful. So that's kind of an advanced tip for you all. What's next? What's next? So we've read all of our stories. Great job, ladies, as usual. And now I think it's the time to go around the corner again, the table again, and talk about what's next. Should we do our announcement now, Jen, or after all the what's next? What Let's do you do think? All the what's next first. All right. Well, what's next with you then? Um, with me, well, yeah. um, next week I will be sending off my um, my book three to my editor, Ooh, Jamie. So exciting. And I think I will, um, I'm not sure if I'm just going to jump into editing book four. Um, I might because I kind of like feel like I'm in a groove right now. Uh, I might do that. Part of me wants to just start writing something new. But no, like I just want to like do something new but I think that if I open up book four it'll feel new because it's been so long <laughs> since right. I touched it because I put it aside in Sarah's, book, book, right? Sarah's book yes yeah. the little mm -hmm. sister mm -hmm. yep so um and you guys have read enough of that one mm -hmm. um that I think that you probably want me to finish it up too I do yeah. like I I know so like this week when I was editing at one point with you guys um I had to turn my camera off because and my my mic um, because I got super emotional on a part that I was editing because it was, it's just a, a, if I was reading this book, I'd be crying. Right. So I was crying when I was editing it. Cause I just really love these characters. Sarah's book has a very similar thing to me. Like it's got a, um, yeah. some hard chapters, some very difficult chapters. And, um, so I don't know. I think, I think I probably will go straight into it. Even though part of me really wants to just write a new book, but. Right. Well, I mean, maybe you could do a 20 minute sprint every day on something maybe. that you can just enjoy. Like I'm going to do 20 minutes of just writing whatever, maybe your fun couple or something like that, that can maybe take the edge off. What's uh, lots of what's next in the chat. Yep. So whoops. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. So excited, <laughs> oh, geez, Sorry, yeah, so all about Jennifer. <laughs> Thanks Gigi. Um, <laughs> Sage says, what's next? More work on her rebrand. Thanks to my lovely yeah. folks in the author tube community. I managed to secure my new domain and I am so excited for all the things to happen. That's awesome. Is there somewhere that we can see the rebranding process that uh, Sage is going through? That's a good question. Um, Piper says, I set a de deadline goal for my work in progress. So I need to get writing it. That's mm. for me. That mm -hmm. was it. Like mm -hmm. I had to set a deadline and I've been doing it all along, but this time I was like really, really strict about my deadline. I'm curious how much time she's given herself. Oh, that's good. 
that's good. All right, Shell says, what's next? Still working through the 100 days writing challenge. I'm on day 60 and outlining oh. my new story. Awesome. Ooh. Has she missed any days? Yeah, have you missed any days, Shell? <laughs> Rhonda, you're like right, a kid. All kinds of questions. Doing, <laughs> Man, I think we need Rhonda on here after the podcast every Friday just telling people, so Piper, you said you were going to do blah, blah, blah. She'll call it's you like on the carpet. like an investigative journalist or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. But what is your what's who's tell me their what's next? Did I not pick someone? Did I did we get all distracted? I Rhonda. Go next. Oh, I go ahead, Tina. Yeah, yeah, what's what's next? Um, well, I'm still out here on the campground, and so I am working hard on um I have a few content edits to do to be done with this edit. And then I'm gonna do like a read through where I have the computer read it to me and um put it through pro writing aid and then off to the proofreader. Ooh, I'm going to have a very big before, before publishing. <laughs> very exciting. Oh, but wait, that's not coming to me. Do you have a, another proofreader in mind? Do you have a, a someone in mind? Or we could talk about no, that off camera. No, I don't. <laughs> All right. Well, that's to be determined. Awesome, Tina. I'm so excited. So are you close? Do you think you have another month? Or what do you think? No, I think I if I really buckle down, I could probably have it done in a week. Ooh, is that Ooh. your goal? Or are you depending a little anxious? on this content edits? If I get stuck on a, one of the content edits, right, um, and it takes me more time, then that might happen. But I All don't right. think it's going All to. All right. Are you giving yourself a deadline, or are you still wanting to be just kind of free about it and not really be deadliney? I would rather like just tell myself I'm going to work on it every day, and when mm -hmm. I get done, I get done, and then I and I just tend to do better that way. That's just my personality. I hear that and I will take my cue from that and tell you guys my what's next. So like, first of all, I have to say I am enjoying Twitter. So you guys who like, you know, have been following along, possibly if you've opened your Twitter for the first time in, I don't know, looks like for some of you several weeks, because yes, I've been going trying to retweet your content and there's nothing there. You will probably see a million posts by Christian indie writers and it is me trying to find our social media stride. You remember we talked about it last week. And so I've kind of gotten to where I'm scheduling tweets to happen during what I would consider awake hours, eight to eight for Christian D writers. But my personal author Twitter is sort of languishing. So I just wanted to update everybody about that. So when you log into your Twitter account, if you see Christian Indie writers posting like over and over and over, good because we want our brand to be in front of people. But I do also want to encourage you guys to post some, some, you know, I don't know, encouragement or kind of whatever on your own profile, start building your visibility to people. We want to encourage you guys. We want to lift others as we climb. So start being a little more intentional about your social media. I'm going to call y'all on the carpet. Okay. And so then when Rhonda's done keeping you accountable about your writing, then Jamie's going to get back on here and get, make you it's all really media. selfish girls for sure. Because what I want is for all of our podcast listeners to post awesome content that I can just retweet. Yeah. And then I don't have to like <laughs> dig and find stuff because everything I find is someone promoting their own book. Ladies, if you can be on Twitter and not be a person promoting your own book for five seconds, you will be a favorite. Okay. Because I am digging around trying to just find relevant to writers stuff on there. That's not just self promo all the time. So just saying um, enough about that. Right, because right, you can self promo, but content, 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 sell, content, content, content. You know, like otherwise people don't care. We had recently somebody comment on one of our tweets, and the comment had nothing to do with the tweet, and it was just him saying, "Here's my book, go buy it." And we, at first, I just was going to delete it, and then I'm like, Jamie wisely spoke up and said. No, reach out to him because this is what we're here for is to help other Christian writers. And so we reached out and let him know that it was not really like good to do that. And that um, if he had, you know, something good to say, you know, and he was kind of snarky when he came back. Well, aren't you going to aren't you here to help Christian writers? Yes, not we're not here to sell your book. Anyway, long story short, his whole page was just him selling his book and nothing else. And he had like 13 followers. And he'll only have 13 followers, right? So. All right. And so, like, I probably should have brought that up. I I'm sure I hope he's not watching the podcast, right? Get I hope busy. he is. I hope he is. We, no, because oh, I mean, we do. Yes, we were trying, our heart was we wanted to help this gentleman. If you want to sell your book, you have to let people know that you care about them as well. You just sticking in people's faces 
are, is not going to sell your books. People want to know the writers. People want to get to know them. Even me with romance, people want to know me. They want to know what I'm doing on a daily basis, believe it or not. They want to know like what it's like for me to be as a good writer and what my office looks like and things like that. They want to know that. They don't want me to say, buy a book, buy a book, buy a book. They don't like that. Mm -hmm. It's really tricky to find that stride, but hopefully we're going to hit it here soon. So it won't be quite so intense with the number of posts that we'll be posting, but we are trying to be a little better about that. And then I just want for my own personal, what's next? I finally found 35 words or less to talk about my book. So I want to hey. just read it for you guys. And it's, I don't know, it is what it is. So here's finally what I've come up with. <clears throat> this is your elevator pitch, correct? Is Not it really. It's, okay. I mean, it's very Dr. Seuss because that's the kind of mood I was in, but it's 35 <laughs> words to talk about awesome. my book. So for me, it's a win. Um, Reese seeks peace, but the wilds demand more. The civvies are clueless. The govies want war. And now that he's met a girl he can't forget, he wonders if love might be worth fighting for. Wow. Wow. I love that. Yes. Do, you do. do you guys love it? I do. Especially since I, the little bit I've read of the story, I'm so excited for this book. I cannot wait to read this. Can you guys tell enough of what it's about from that? Because I was so happy you with it when tell, I read it. You can tell what it's about. You can tell genre and it gives you a little peek into your main character. Oh, yay. I'm so glad. And I've just got to give a, uh, a shout out yep. to somebody out there in the audience who knows who they are that sent me a very encouraging message this week. And you guys, when you reach out and tell an author that you enjoyed their book or just anything kind and encouraging that you can say to another author that they know is because you read their book and you liked it. Wow, because we all think our book is good or we wouldn't publish it, but we're still kind of secretly not sure anybody else is going to think it's good. So don't ever be afraid to reach out because you might be the person to propel somebody to have the amazing breakthroughs in writing that I had this week. I just have to say the the, the encouraging comments came right on time and I had been kind of in prayer about my work and then I just had wall after wall come down in my project just because another person believed in me. So you guys reach out and tell someone if there's a writer in your life and you believe in their project, don't hold back. That's what I got to say about that. Okay. So what's uh, next for you, Rhonda? Um, <clears throat> okay, so I kind of feel like, you know, at the beginning of the school year, everything's just kind of new again. You've got your new school supplies and your new habits, and your new teachers and everything. Well, I kind of feel like right now, um, the last couple of weeks has been the school shopping and then school is starting this week. Um, I've been working on uh, my office hour habits. And now I'm trying to add in social media habits. So that's not going so well. I just need to be on my computer more um, to be able to get that done. So that'll be my focus this week. But I'm I'm happy with my schedule. And I think it's going right. to work out for me. Yes, because, you know, we're all about trying to make our writing career work with the rest of our lives. And so you've got to just schedule it out sometimes and make the time to do it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Jen, did we talk about your what's next? Yes. You're coming to me with edits. Okay. Awesome. Yes. So I hit everybody, right? Sometimes yes. I'm a little distractible. Awesome. Do we, um, all hearts clear then? Do we think that we're done for today? Or do we have anything more to say about descriptions? We have something more to say about something oh. coming up. <gasps> Super fun. How could I forget? Guess what? You guys, our 100th episode is coming up. Jen is like dancing to imaginary song. Dun, 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 dun. 100th episode. Okay. So because it's our 100th episode, we're doing something super fun. Ladies, why don't you tell us what it's all about? Rhonda, you're supposed to go first. Oh, I am? Oh, I'll <laughs> just do it. I'm I'm do it. Yeah. Just All right, I'll just do it. I'm here. Yeah. So our 100th episode is coming up and we are having a contest to Yay! celebrate. Yay! That's right. We're going to give away the following. A signed copy of Plot Your Novel by D.B. Bauman. A signed copy of Second Chance by J.R. Nichols. A signed copy of Avoiding Esther by Jennifer Carl Tong. A Christian indie writer's mug. I don't have mine here. Does anyone have theirs, Andy? I don't. Oh, oh, 
<laughs> we're, oh. we're so not prepared. I um, <laughs> uh, we have you have some swag. You get a Christian indie writers mug as well as uh, handmade coasters crafted by Christina Katain with our logo on it. And here is how you enter. Because it's our hundredth episode, we decided that we wanted to do something special. We wanted to celebrate a hundred with a hundred. So part of our contest is writing a drabble. A dr- yes, a drabble is, I'm scared to death because I'm going to do it too. A drabble is a piece of writing that is exactly 100 words. No it's more, on- no less. No more, no less. A complete story in 100 words. So that's, those of you that decide to participate in this, we will randomly choose some of them to share on the podcast and Hi. also to put out on our social media. So we're very excited about this for more information and to enter the contest in lots of different ways. You can get lots of different entries. Go to our website, www.christianindiewriters.net forward slash episode 100. So christianindiewriters.net forward slash episode 100. And you'll have all all the deets there. Please enter. Please enter. We need things to put on that podcast episode. Yeah. If you guys do not do your 100, even if you fail, even if you only get 96 words, don't leave us flapping in the breeze. We're not planning that week because you all are giving us our content. So please write some drabbles and send them. And, no pressure. Um, no pressure, right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Maria says the contest sounds good. Yay. Hey. All right. So you guys get on over there. Jen, hit them with that web address one more time. ChristianAnyWriters.net forward slash episode 100. Ooh, 100 Shell, zero, episode 100. Uh, Shell says, challenge accepted. She's never done a drama before. Yeah, it'll be really fun. Mm-hmm. I'm excited mm-hmm. too. Do we have like a topic? Do we want to maybe put like anything? It's open topic, wild card, right? 100 word story about anything. Yes. Awesome. Because, because we all write different genres. So I think we should, especially since it's so difficult, I think to do a hundred words. Yes. I think we, that's, that's and it. That's now that I've one. completely got your hopes up about reading them on the air, we can't read them all. Can we, Jen? We'll have to select no. a few. Okay. We're going to randomly select them. Yes. All right. Unless all only right. two of you do it, then congratulations. <laughs> your odds are pretty good guys. I mean, <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, I think that that's uh, all of it then. If uh, there's nothing else. I think then. that the, comment that sage made it's really funny yeah, she said, you write, say? A, write a drabble they said it'll be fun <laughs> a... i never said it would be fun <laughs> yeah you did did i or maybe it was jamie somebody it's, said it'll be fun the contest is fun there's other things to do like follow us and follow each of us and you get all these different entries the drabble is oh, yeah. part of it yeah like we don't really want to say that you don't have to write a drabble we want to pretend that you really have to write one but we right. we did they talked me out of forcing you guys it's you guys are lucky these other ones stepped up for you because i was like they have to write a drabble they're like no so you can still enter even if you write bupkis that's fine okay i didn't so. step up for them by the way <laughs> Rhonda also was like you will write a drabble we all okay. have all four of us have to we can't get out of it and- okay so um If that's all, then this concludes this episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. Until next time, may your pen be prolific, may your deadlines be met, and may all of your words honor Christ. Bye now. Bye, everyone.